So we are now past our midterm. We are starting on our first original illustration project. We've done an original logo. Now we're going to use vector and raster imagery together to make what's probably the most commercially viable skill we learn in the class, which is making original imagery as a versatile spot illustration. There are three steps to it. One is sketching out your spot illustration idea. The second is getting clean line art that we turn into a vector. And then the third is coloring behind that line art to get a full color spot illustration. There are lots of types of ways to get coloring. So next class will be mostly about coloring techniques. Today is about sketching and getting clean line art, which is called digital inking. Sometimes when you digitally ink, the black line art by the end of coloring turns into its own color. That's called a color hold. And you can see, with, see it with this past student example. The blue lines were black lines before. Sometimes they're just left black. Sometimes they're thick like you see here. Sometimes they're thin like you see here. But they're always going to clean it up. We're going to learn a lot with this. The first is understanding what a free-floating spot illustration is and what it means to be original so that you could sell it if you wanted to doesn't need to be covered under educational free use. And we're going to understand the disadvantages and advantages of vector digital inking versus raster digital inking. And we're going to develop literacy and competency at basic digital coloring, but that will be more next class. Flat color, duotone, hard and soft edge, full spectrum, color holds, and special effects. And then if we have time for this project, and if not, for the next project, which incorporates this project and turns it into a poster, we're going to learn about color separation and making things appropriate for printing at a professional level. Let's look at some examples. So a spot illustration is something like a t-shirt graphic or a sticker. I'm going to pass around some examples. This is my favorite character designer. His name is Sean Galloway. Worked for Marvel, he's worked for DC, he's, he, he was the art director for Spectacular Spider Man, that animated series. Uh, but he has license to do fan art, you know, licensed fan art for all kinds of things. So he has like He Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all of that. You can see his stickers on one side, then you can see how he composites those together on the back. So whether you're doing character design like Sean Gallery does, or whether you're doing uh, something political or doing something narrative or doing something symbolic like you'll see in that American illustration annual. This is kind of a combination of both this example. You want it to have a compelling silhouette because it's a free floating shape. So this was before Vladimir Putin um, and Russia occupied Ukraine. But this is um, just an example of character design doing a caricature of that Russian leader, and it's a play on the words Putin on the Ritz, right? So you have Putin as kind of this He-Man figure stomping on a Ritz cracker. Okay, this example, you can see just a blurry pencil sketch, and then the clean line art really cleaned it up, and then the coloring ended up not just filling in coloring behind the line art, but actually replacing the black color of the lines with color itself. That's called a color hold. And if you look at Putin on the Ritz here, you can actually see how the outline is actually a dark brown color instead of black. So that's a pretty common change. It can be kind of badge related. It can be like an emblem. It can be a monster design like this werewolf. I like this example because this student used a really thin line art, a lot like animation. Animation tends to use a thin technical line so it can match frame to frame very easily, whereas print illustration tends to be more gestural like this, thick and thin lines. This one uses full spectrum coloring rather than just duotone flat coloring. This one is a clever idea for doing a character design as a spot illustration. Instead of doing the full body, like this or like this, they're just doing the portrait, but in order to make it an interesting silhouette, they encapsulate that in a circle. Right? 
So again, we don't want any just squares or rectangles. You want the shape to be interesting for a sticker or for a spot illustration. That's going to make for, for better use. All right, this has a third step, which is called color separation. And we're going to be learning that in the next two assignments, how you can separate it out for, for color printing. And then there are lots of examples because this project is a favorite in the class because you get to do whatever kind of content you want. And when you look at the student examples, you'll see just how all of these are turned into spots. So this is just a head, kind of a zombie head. And then notice that they choose very particularly the shape that's most interesting, right? Even though it doesn't have a neck or a body, they're not just cutting it off with a horizontal line. They're finding a free floating shape. Same thing with this snowman, free floating shapes. Same thing for this Fiesta illustration. Same thing for this illustration of Pisces. And once you make your full color spot illustration, then we will have the ability to put it on t-shirts, to put it on pillows, to put it on a variety of products. And if it is not fan art or someone else's intellectual property, but our own, then you can actually sell it to the public as well. So here we have some fan art from an, an indie game called uh, The Book of Isaac, I think. And so it's great to create and use for personal use and use for your educational portfolio, but you don't want to put that up for public sale, right? If it's not your own intellectual property, because it will just get taken off and you'll get a cease and desist letter. Now, I like this one because it shows sketching. And then it shows how cleanly the digital inking will refine your sketch lines. And then we just add coloring to it. Same thing here. And both of these are perfectly acceptable. Your lines don't need to be perfectly clean. You just need to be able to control the style of them for it to be what you want. And then turn it into a spot illustration. This is how comic books are done. It's how a lot of online graphics are done. It's how game design graphics are done for 2D games. It's a great opportunity to do some monster design or character design. And if you don't have any other idea that's better, you can use the same theme we use for our logos, the idea of a spirit animal. Okay. So it also doesn't matter what your drawing style is. By going through this technique, we're going to make them look more professional and clean. So if this is your drawing style, once we change it into digital inking, it's going to look very uniform and clean. And then we add color to that. And then this is a good example of, like Arturo Herrera did with Disney back in exercise one, taking intellectual property that's someone else's. So this is from Don Bluth and from 20, 20th Century Fox's The Rats of Nim animation, and then modifying that character, kind of turning into a zombie that's dripping, and then this multicolor job. So that's transforming it into their own work. So lots and lots of examples. Boom, boom, boom. Now, the other reason to really pay attention to doing something you like for this is this is a really good project to print for the, the annual student show. Annual student show submissions will be between April 8th and April 11th. And whether you decide to submit your spot illustration, like this is one that got into the show and then got purchased, um, or whether, and so was this one, or whether you wait until you do your full poster design and then print out your poster and submit that, those are really great student show submissions because you can show your own personal aesthetic. All right, so on and on and on. It's about making something versatile. And then let's see, it can be turned into a scarf. It can even then be tiled into a pattern for textiles. This is a little pencil bag. So, how do we do the spot illustration? We're going to be using freeware for it. But we need to start with line art. And your illustration can be as detailed as you want, 
but we need to be able to turn it into black line art first. So if you're going to do shading in the black line art, you can do it as stippling or as hatching, or like you did for your logo, you can just simplify everything into solid shapes. Or you can do a combination of several things. But that black line art is going to come from your sketch. I'm going to show you how to do that digital inking today. And then next class, we're going to start adding color behind that line art. First with flats, then separating the flats into lights and darks, and then having the option of adding full spectrum color, color hold, special effects, and then learning about color separation. Here are a few different professional artists doing this process for different projects. Um, David Sisella, you can see his work on Behance. But he does this fully rendered graphite sketch first, and then does the line art as a vector, you can see it there, and then just uses the shading from the sketch to inform the, the shading of the coloring. And this is duotone hard edge coloring. Past student example, it's always good to have inspiration. So, my inspiration is I want to do kind of a spirit animal again. I'm thinking like school spirit. So I'm going to take the, the Nico, the Nighthawk mascot of the college. And I'm inspired by some of these illustrations of the feathered serpent, bless you, which was my logo design. And mostly I like the line quality and the coloring palette of this one. This is flat color. This is duotone hard edge. This is duotone soft edge, you know, so we're going to learn the differences between all of these. But it has to start with a sketch. So I just did a little pencil sketch. My idea is to do Nico as kind of a breakfast cereal mascot character. And then I just take that pencil sketch and I clean it up in Photoshop or in Photopea for us to be a little bit cleaner. And now I need to turn that into clean line art. So how do you approach this? Well, let me just take my rough sketch. I'm going to put these into my folder. So I recommend everyone start an assignment five folder. I'm finished with assignment four now, finish my logo. So for assignment number five, I have my sketch, and now I didn't want to clean that up. So I'm going to open up Photopea, a raster program. And this video is all about sketching for it. And I might look for inspiration. So breakfast cereal mascots, images, let's see. The cartoon characters. So that one looks like a good example. This one might be a good one to, to take color palettes from. This kind of thing. They're all pretty clean. They all use pretty minimal inking and pretty thick lines. Some of them are flat colors, some of them are duotone colors. This is fan art, it's not actually particularly good. So, this one looks more licensed, but it might just be a composite. And so you can see some of the variations, right? So, inspirations. It's always good to have inspiration, though it's not a requirement. I'm going to put that into my folder as well. And I like this one because I love stickers. So how do I make this match the finish of this? Well, I need to have clean line art. And then I need to pick colors that go behind it. So if I open it in Photopea, I can start to clean it up a little bit. So I open up Photopea. And I drag and drop my sketch in. 
I have pencils and scratch papers. 